Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about the bi-directional relationship between attitudes and behaviour. So the key idea here is that um, that relationship is bi-directional, okay, which means one affects the other, and the area of learning is the bi-directional relationship. So we're really covering some important points here today. So what is a bi-directional relationship? Well, bi is a prefix for two. Think of bicycle um, or a bisexual, um, anything like that. So it's two. Um, the direction is which way. And a relationship is something held between two things, objects, people, etc. Okay, so um, when we say there's a bi-directional relationship, um, we're talking about a relationship where each affects the other. So the relationship between attitudes and behaviour is bi-directional, which means that attitudes affect behaviour and behaviour affects attitudes. So it's really important to understand that they can both affect each other and also that sometimes our attitudes and behaviour aren't consistent with one another. So what affects this relationship between the two? The first thing that affects it is um, attitude strength. So strong attitudes have a stronger influence on behaviour they endure more over time, and they're more resistant to change than those are, that are weak. Okay? The second thing is attitude accessibility. So think about how easily something comes to mind, how accessible it is. Um, and this is also influenced by strength. So think about um, your kind of, or most people's immediate reactions to the word snake. They'll think scary and dangerous. You know, it's quite accessible, quite easy to draw that from your mind. The third thing is ambivalence. Now, we can have both negative and positive responses to the same thing. So to be ambivalent about something is to kind of just be like, well, yeah, oh, I don't really care, all right, whatever. Um, so an example of this in terms of attitudes is an attitude that you might have, like me, towards chocolate. Now, chocolate is tasty and delicious, and I love it, but it is also unhealthy, which means I don't love it, okay? So you can have positive and negative responses to the one thing. Now, some more factors that affect this link. Um, the social situation. So this affects kind of how freely we might express our attitudes. And sometimes we might not express our attitudes because we kind of are worried about the image that people might perceive about us. So an example of this is, um, say, for example, you don't like Brussels sprouts. But when you go to your friend's house, you're trying to make a good impression on the parents and they serve you Brussels sprouts. Now, more, of, more often than not, you're going to eat them just kind of because it's polite and the right thing to do and you don't want to make a fuss. Okay. Another example of this is peer pressure. So something like smoking because all of your friends are smoking, really bad, um, but this kind of helps explain why that might happen. Okay. Um, even if you don't like smoking, sorry, is the tagline I was supposed to add on the end of that. So even if you don't like smoking but you're with all your friends and they are, well, there's a bit of an inconsistency there, but you'll kind of, um, the behaviour will affect that if that makes sense. Now, attitude specificity, so how specific an attitude is will also affect this relationship. So, specific attitudes are more likely to affect behaviour. So, for example, um, having a negative attitude about jogging, you might hate jogging for one reason or another, um, that's more specific than just hating exercise and it's more likely um, to change behaviour. So, you're more likely to, to not um, jog. Okay, let's look at some of the ways that behaviour affects attitudes. That's really important that you understand these key concepts. Um, the first one is cognitive dissonance. There's a lot of um, really interesting videos and information and websites out there on this, but this is, um, I guess, a phenomenon where people prefer their attitudes and behaviour to be consistent. And the kind of inconsistency between the two creates a discomfort. And this discomfort is called uh, cognitive dissonance. Okay, so it's a psychological discomfort when your behaviours and attitudes aren't consistent. Um, how to fix this? You can change this either by changing the attitude or by changing your behaviour. Um, now, this is a theory of attitude change. So we know that you're either going to change your attitude or your behaviour. So say, for example, um, you... God, you, you hate cyclists. When you're driving and you see a cyclist coming up, it makes you really angry and, my goodness, you have the strongest negative attitude towards cyclists on the road. However, one afternoon when your relatives ask you to go for a bike ride and you find that you really like riding your bike and that you're thinking about maybe um, riding it to work every day or to school every day. 
Well, there's a cognitive dissonance there because you hate cyclists, but you want to ride your bike. So the way to change that is to either no longer ride your bike, which is changing your behavior, or thinking, changing your attitude that maybe cyclists aren't too bad after all, and you can change that attitude to be a bit more positive towards them. All right, the next um, theory we're going to talk about is self-perception theory. Now, where cognitive dissonance was a theory about attitude change, this is a theory about how attitudes are formed. So this explains how we form an attitude about something in a situation where we don't already have some kind of firmly held attitude. So what you do in this situation, you don't already have an attitude. You look at your behavior and what you do, and from there you interpret your attitude. So you look at what you do and then decide what you feel. So again, going back to the cyclist, think about um, when you're driving in the car with mum or dad or friends and you see a cyclist, do you get angry? Do you get frustrated? Do you kind of cringe at the idea that they're coming up? Or are you quite, you know, just happy to see them there, think good on them, they're being healthy? You might not realise that you have an attitude and so you'd look at your behaviour in this case and then determine whether your attitude is positive or negative. All right, covered a few different things today, so if you need um, any help or some more material, as always, see me or the resources. See you next time.